Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor John Moore. Uh, welcome to Our Shepherd Live. We're so glad that you found us this morning. Your presence here is an answer to our prayers. This morning, we are celebrating the love of God, and we're celebrating how our Lord Jesus Christ satisfies out of compassion for his people. He satisfies our deepest hungers and he brings about holy multiplication. So just stay tuned and you'll hear more about this in just a few moments. So let's make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading today is from Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him whom by understanding made the heavens. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights. For his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day. For his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule the night. For his steadfast love endures forever. Good morning, our shepherd. We are in the little church building, and it's good to be back in here. It's been a while. Uh, we were going to set up outside, but it is pretty hot out there, so we decided to set up in front of the altar. Our first song is, I Come, O Savior, to Thy Table. I come, O Savior, to Thy table, for we can weary. What higher gifts 
chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what do you do when someone you know, when someone that you, um, maybe it's a family member, someone that you've worked with, a cousin, a relative, maybe it's a, a comrade, uh, what do you do when someone you know in such a close way passes away? departs from this world and and you just get notice of it um, after it's happened uh, a few not too long ago a, a good friend of mine a, a, a pastor that I worked with for five years um, pastor Randy McCone uh, suddenly was hospitalized and and uh, sent off to Iowa City um, to figure out what was going on. I think it was like a Friday evening that he went into the hospital and and friends of ours notified us that that he had gone into the, the hospital and asked us to pray for him and we certainly did lift him up to the Lord. It wasn't only days later that I heard word that they had sent him home and without any kind of um, medical hope for his situation. He had just gotten into the hospital for the first time, was just being looked at for the first time, and then just days later he was being sent home so that he could die with his family surrounding him at home. It was such a shock to me. I don't know if I've really had a chance to properly process this and, and, uh, and grieve over this properly. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, um, in today's lesson had just gotten news that his cousin, his cousin John, who whom, uh, was born to uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah in their old age and was the, the promised prophet uh, that was to come to prepare the way of the Lord. And he, and he went out and preached a powerful word in the wilderness and, he, and Jesus himself went out to be baptized by him. This John, after 
uh, a period of time being uh, imprisoned by Herod Antipas, suddenly had been violently executed by this Herod, Herod Antipas, the, the son of the same Herod, Herod the Great, that attempted to kill Jesus when he was only uh, a few years old, um, maybe months old. And, and remember how Herod the Great, when the wise men came to find the place where the, the, the Christ would be born, the king would be born, uh, how, how upset Herod became that a rival to his throne might be born and, and he tried to, he killed all the, the babies and children two years of age and younger that were born in Bethlehem at that time. And so now Jesus gets word that John, the one who had prepared the way for his arrival, was now dead, suddenly gone from this earth. How would you react to such news? Well, Jesus' reaction was he wanted to go away to a desolate place. He wanted to go away with his disciples and get away from, the, from the, all the demands of the crowds that were all around him so that, that he could spend time with his heavenly Father in prayer, so that he could spend time with his disciples uh, contemplating and, and processing what had just taken place. This death of John uh, meant that Jesus' own departure from this world was ever closer. So he gets in a boat with his disciples and he goes to the opposite end of the lake, the Sea of Galilee. And, and what happens, the, the, disciples, the uh, crowds follow. They don't follow. They anticipate where Jesus is going. Instead of just staying there behind, they, they go around as fast as they could, can around the lake. And when Jesus comes to the other side of this desolate, desolate place, they are there waiting for him. They are there demanding his attention. Can you imagine <laughs> what kind of uh, reception would you have given the crowd as, as you get off the boat and, you, and you're trying to, to get away. You just, you just went on this trip across the lake to get away from this crowd and they're, they're there again. They're relentless. Well, I think I would have been pretty irritated. I would have wanted to just uh, you know, say, uh, see you all later, I'll be back later on, I need some time alone, just leave me alone. But that's not how Jesus reacted. Instead, what Jesus does is, is he looks on them and he has compassion on them. And the Greek word here again is that, that shplagizomai. Shplagizomai, it's a, it's a mouthful that that I, I don't think I pronounced enough uh, gutturals in that word to, to, to do it right. But basically that word means uh, from the very bowels, from the depth of your bowels, having a, a feeling of emotion, of pity, of, of compassion uh, towards these people and their need. The last time we heard uh, the scriptures des describe Jesus in this way. Uh, they went on to say Jesus had compassion on them because the crowds were like sheep without a shepherd. Isn't that what's going on in our world today? So many people, so many people are hungering and thirsting and desiring and, and in need and looking for answers in all different places, but they are like sheep without a shepherd. And here Jesus is. 
And instead of selfishly attending to his, his physical exhaustion, his emotional, emotional exhaustion, his, his need to uh, just kind of process as a man, you know, here's Jesus is, is fully human as well as fully God, the Son of God, and, and he has this need to, to process all the emotions and the things that he's feeling but he sets them aside because these people, this crowd, are, are in need. And, it, and the scripture tells us that Jesus went on to heal those in the crowd. So Jesus spends the rest of the day attending, serving this crowd, having compassion, on this crowd in every individual need that he addresses. And until it came a point in time in the day when the disciples are, are, are uh, just kind of uh, realizing that, that this crowd needs to go away. Uh, this, it's late in the day, this crowd, they're at a, des a desolate place, uh, there's uh, uh, there's hardly any villages around and and disciples tell Jesus just send the disciples send the crowds away so that they can find food for themselves so that they can go out into the villages and and buy food you know see uh, in our day and age we can if we're hungry if we've got a, a crowd of people that come over uh, we can just run out to uh, Kroger or HEB or Walmart and, and get whatever we need, right? Um, there's got to be a, a camp store nearby, right? Well, there's got to be a convenience store someplace, right? But that wasn't the case in, in Jesus' day. And, and so and Jesus says, uh, when the disciples say, send the, the, the crowds away, Jesus says, no. You take care of them. You feed them. <laughs> feed them what, Jesus? What do you mean, feed them? There's, all we have found is five uh, loaves of bread and two fish. That's not going to go anyplace. That's not going to feed anybody. There's 5,000 people. There has to be over 5,000 people here. How far is that going to go? Maybe you have felt Jesus has asked you to do something impossible, that Jesus has put upon your heart uh, something that you couldn't handle on your own, that you didn't have resources that would uh, necessarily be able to answer the need that, that Jesus had placed on your heart. Well, Jesus says, come here. Just give me those five loaves of bread and those two fish. And in that, that's when Jesus takes the resources that had already been entrusted to uh, this group. The 12 disciples had, had, had scrounged around and, and found uh, these loaves of bread and the fish. And what does Jesus do? Jesus uh, lifts these up before the Heavenly Father and he gives thanks to the Heavenly Father for, for the resources, for the food that he has given them. And he blesses that food. He blesses the bread and he, he blesses the fish. And then, uh, then he, uh, just prior to this, he had, he had told the disciples, give me the food, give me the bread and the fish, but I want you to go have the crowd sit down. And so this crowd, and uh, Matthew tells us that there were 5,000 men that were present, and he says that's not including the women and children. So, you know, this could be a crowd of up to 20,000 or more people that are present. And, and they're just kind of scattered, trying to find a place to sit down. And they're hungry. And you know what happens when... When I get hungry, you know what happens when you get hungry, you just kind of get kind of uh, uh, hangry, is that the word? That, uh, where you kind of get edgy and until you have something to put in your stomach to, to quiet that, that, uh, that hunger. 
And, and so Jesus takes the bread and blesses it and, and he breaks the, the, the bread into pieces and he gives it back to the disciples. And the disciples carry out Jesus' instructions is give this to the people. And what happens in that very moment? As, as Jesus' 12 disciples go out among the crowds with the, the broken pieces of the 12, of those uh, five loaves and, and two fish, Jesus brings about a holy multiplication. Jesus and we don't know exactly when it happens, but what we do know is that it doesn't take place until the disciples are faithful. It doesn't t take place until the disciples receive back from Jesus what they have given to Jesus, what, what Jesus has blessed and given thanks for. In that, in that moment of their faithfulness, of the disciples' faithfulness to Jesus' word, they go out and 5,000 people, more than 5,000 people are fed. So much so that the scripture tells us that they were satisfied. Now, uh, it's not too often that a fish dinner uh, uh, satisfies me, but uh, Evidently, uh, this meal was enough to fill their bellies and they didn't want any, any more. They had enough, more than enough to, to fill them. It's interesting. I said that it wasn't until the disciples received back from, from Jesus what they had given to Jesus it reminds me of, of what took place uh, when Joshua led the people of Israel across the Jordan River. Remember that? Uh, at the end of the 40 years of wilderness wandering when Moses' uh, at leadership had ended and, and Joshua's leadership began, um, the Lord told him to cross the Jordan River, but who was supposed to go first? It was supposed to be the, the priests the Levites that went first and, and we're told that this river, uh, the Jordan River was filled to overflowing. Uh, the banks were overflowing at this time. You can just, uh, you know, imagine uh, what the, the river was like. I, I, I know what it's like in the springtime in Missouri as the Missouri River swells up. It becomes very difficult lots of, of water uh, building up pressure and uh, just washing things away. But as the, as the uh, priests step into the water, that is the moment that God stopped the waters from flowing. At that very moment of their faithfulness of walking into the water, that's when the ground below them became dry ground. I think there's a lesson for all of us, isn't there? When God, when Jesus Christ asks us to do a work for him, we don't have to be worried about whether we're going to have enough resources to carry out what he's asked us to do. That that he's going to bring about a multiplication. We may think, well, what can God do with the, the meager offering that I'm bringing to his, his altar? Uh, you know, I only have so much. This isn't going to go very far. But when we bring it for, before the Lord and, and dedicate it to his holy name and, and, and give it to Jesus to do with it, as he wishes, that's when the multiplication takes place. That's when God's power is present, working God's will in all things.
and that also may mean us doing something as an act of faith, trusting that he is going to carry out what he's promised to do. So brothers and sisters in Christ, today the people of our shepherd are going to be gathering in a, in a parking lot. <laughs> We're going to be gathering uh, in our cars uh, and we're going to be bringing before the Lord uh, a meager meal of little tiny wafers of bread and little tiny cups of wine. And we're going to ask our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to bless these as we give thanks for these gifts. And Jesus is going to return these gifts to us. And when he gives them back to us, he's going to multiply them for us with blessing. We give him bread and wine, and he's going to give us his very body and blood given and shed for the forgiveness of our sins. This meal is for the crowds that are hungering and thirsting hungering and thirsting for something that this world can't offer. The very presence and the very promises of a holy, just, and righteous God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, um, God is with you. God loves you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, has this deep, deep compassion for you in whatever you're going through today, in whatever struggles that you are enduring, um, in whatever needs that you have. Lift them up before the Lord and know that He loves you. And, um, and also, if, if you're desiring to uh, receive this, this wonderful meal, this uh, holy supper of Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, for, for your life and for salvation. Uh, don't be afraid to, to contact me. Uh, give me a call. And I will make sure that, uh, that you receive this gift for your benefit and for your blessing. So, the Lord bless you, and may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Hey folks, we're so glad that you uh, found us this morning, and uh, we're just uh, very grateful that uh, you're a part of our worship family. Um, and today, right now, we're, uh, this would be the opportunity that normally in the worship service that we would be passing around an offering plate. Uh, now this is a privilege that it's for uh, those that are followers of Jesus Christ that are responding to his gifts and, and returning to him uh, gifts of tithes and, and uh, offerings uh, out of uh, the abundance that he has bestowed upon them. Now, if you're a member of another congregation, uh, we're not asking you to give to our congregation. Please support your own home congregation. Um, and if you're not yet a, a follower of Jesus Christ, you know, this is not something that uh, uh, the Lord necessarily expects of you. This is a, an act of faith, um, something that um, the Holy Spirit brings about uh, in one's life. So, uh, but those of you who would like to uh, bring an offering and give to the Lord. You can do so by sending your gifts and offerings to our Shepherd Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 1509, Huffman, Texas, 77336. Also, if you have uh, any concerns, if you have something that's going on in your life, if God is talking to you about something, uh, please contact me at pastor at voicehandsfeetforhim.org pastor at voicehandsfeedforhim.org.
We're going to join together now in the Apostles' Creed, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us go to the throne of our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that, uh, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to be our Savior. And we thank and praise you for the work of, of John the Baptist, who prepared the hearts of the people to receive their Savior. And Lord, um, we thank you that, that you have brought us to repentance, that you have brought us to the knowledge of our need for a Savior and, and, and have shown us that Jesus is the one who has been sent to die for us, to set us free, and to grant us life everlasting, even as he is our risen Lord and Savior. Lord God, when uh, the people the crowds gathered around Jesus, even though he was grieving over the passing of, of his cousin John, and, and he wanted to, to find a, a desolate place to be with his disciples, to pray, and, and to just to, to process this passing and, and um, just to spend time with you. The crowds, the crowds kept pressing in on him. The crowds with their sicknesses and their needs and, and their desires for Jesus kept pressing in on him. And Jesus, from the very depth of his being, had compassion on them. Lord, help us as we look around into our community, as we look around into uh, our neighborhoods, into our families, into our workplace. Help us to have compassion, holy compassion, that deep, uh, deep uh, pity and love and mercy towards others in their need uh, as Jesus has for us. And Lord, uh, Jesus took uh, what the disciples brought before them, just uh, uh, five loaves and, and two fish. And, and as he presented them to you, as he lifted them up before your your throne as he gave thanks for them and blessed them as he returned them to the disciples after breaking them into pieces the disciples were faithful in distributing them and and in that faithfulness you brought about a multiplication this crowd of over th 5,000 people 5,000 men plus women and children that were not counted were filled to the full. They were filled so that they were satisfied. Lord, help us to know and believe and trust in, in your word and your promises. And, and even when we think the meager resources that have been entrusted to us are too small, when we lift them up to you, when we give them into the Lord's hands, as, as he speaks a blessing, as Jesus speaks a blessing over these resources and you return them to us, Lord, you bring about multiplication for the kingdom's sake. You bring about blessing for the kingdom's sake. Today, Lord, uh, we are lifting before you simple bread and simple wine. And in, in this, uh, this meal that we are going to celebrate in a few minutes, uh, Jesus 
you bless it and you break it and, and you give it back to us. And, and in, in celebrating this meal, you give us your very body and blood that was given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins 2,000 years ago. You come to us today to fortify us, to strengthen us, to, to redeem us, to restore us, to give us uh, life and salvation. Lord, uh, there's a hunger deep within each one of us that sometimes we don't realize what it really is, but it's a hunger for you. It's a hunger for your righteousness. It's a hunger for your justice. It's a hunger for your holiness. It's a hunger for your presence. Lord, in this meal, you satisfy us and you strengthen us and you send us out to be a blessing, to have compassion on our community, to love those around us that at times seem unlovable. And you give us the privilege to bring your blessings of forgiveness, love, and life to others. Bless us, Lord. Bless our community. Send us forth in your peace. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We uh, continue our prayer with the prayer that uh, Luther taught us. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello again. This next song is called The Blessing. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you. Lord bless you and keep you. 
the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.